Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now in this video we're going to be looking at end-to-end -end testing for a Chrome extension. Now this is specifically for Manifest version 2 unless you have a Manifest version 3 extension and you only want to test your content script to see if it's actually injecting into a page for example. But if you have a Manifest 3 extension that has like a, you set a key so you've got a uh, specific uh, extension ID then this will work for you as well. Okay, so we're going to be using um, Puppeteer here um, and Jest um, to, to get this to actually work. And this was inspired by a blog post by um, uh, a couple of people. So there's Scott White here and there was another post, um, I can't find the link to it at the minute, um, but it was by uh, Daniel here. Um, so I try and add a link to both of these posts uh, in the description as well because this will go into more detail on how you can actually use this uh, for your um, testing as well. Um, so what we're using here is a really, really simple extension um, that just appears. So if I enable it, the extension doesn't actually do anything. Well, it does do something, but it's more for testing. So we can see there's a pop-up here, and we want to be able to test that these elements are actually appearing. You know, so this is end-to-end -end testing, so we would have, ideally this would be, you know, one side of our testing. So we'd actually be testing the, the code in the back end on one side, and then we've got this here we can actually see this is all linking together. So we have a, a title and a button. What this also does is it will inject this element here and we want to be able to detect, is this working? If we go on a site, is it injecting this element? If I go on another site, is this injecting uh, the element onto the page? Um, so once this loads, we should hopefully see, it's being quite slow. Yeah, we can see this element has been injected. So basically we want to be able to te test that all of this is happening. Um, so let's just close uh, this now. Uh, so if we go back to uh, VS Code, this is set up to run, um, you see we have this test uh, command here that's going to run Jest. Now what this will do is it will run our, our test script over here. So this will import from Puppeteer. We have a path where our extension is, so our extension uh, files are located just here. So like, like I say, that's that extension I just showed you. Really, really simple and it's on manifest version 2. Um, and so what I'll do is I'll go through this code in a moment, but I'll show you what it actually will do first. So if we run yarn test, it's going to open up uh, Chromium and include our extension and then run some tests. So it's going to take a moment here to, to work and then you can see Chromium's opening up. And if all works, this should close itself afterwards. So you can see there it's opening up our pop-up. It's going to open up twice and then it's going to open up um, a website to test the uh, content injection. So you can see that's all running there. And let's see what's happening. So sometimes I think what looks like here is that's actually failed. Um, so it could be a different error. I think it's probably because of this. Um, so if I go over here and agree, let's see if it actually works. There's that element. Okay, so that's closed. So I was actually waiting for that to happen. So that is a slight issue uh, with my test here. But I try to keep this as simple as possible to make it easy to follow. So if we look over here, what we have going on is, uh, this is where I run yarn test just here. You can see it's opening up the test. So we have each, because I'm testing basically to see does the, uh, the text string equal what it should be. Um, sort of the way I'm basing these tests around. So I'm just logging this as well so we can see what is happening. So the first one should say button text, then we should see pop-up title, then we should see injected element, and then we just have a cleanup function afterwards. So we can see here that all the tests uh, ran and all of them were successful, so they all passed. Um, this is just standard, you know, jest uh, responses. So if we look over here at the actual code now, let's close this out. What we can see, I'll close this as well, is we have a function up here that just grabs our extension ID. Now this only works for manifest version two that I've seen so far because we use the background page um, and our extension name to sort of work out uh, which target from the browser on Puppeteer is the extension and then we grab the ID from that. So you can see here um, we're looping through the targets looking to see that the uh, target title matches our extension name which is up here and then the type is a background page. And obviously with Manifest version two, we're not using background pages, we're using service workers. Um, but it's not just as simple as changing that because they appear slightly differently in this. Um, so we'll need a different way around that. But if you have a, a set extension ID, it's gonna be a lot easier for that. 
So you could almost just have your extension ID hard coded up here and then load that later. So I'll show you why we actually need that. Um, so that is the extension ID. What we have next, um, this browser array here, um, which we use for cleanup. I'll explain that in a moment. Um, there's that cleanup function, but I'll explain that afterwards. So first, what we have here is a number of tests. So you can see here is our first test. What we're doing is we're launching Puppeteer. Um, so headless would be uh, that it would run this without actually us having to see the browser. Um, but for a Chrome extension at the moment, you have to have headless set to false. So it means it will open up and we'll be able to see this. Um, one thing to note here, there are services out there um, like browserless, for example, that's like a, um, an API you can call or run this for you in the cloud um, without you having to run this locally on machine. Um, but I haven't actually been able to get this to work yet with um, loading an extension. So if you actually find out how to do that, please do let me know um, and I'll update this, uh, make a new video and link to it from here. Um, but what we can see is we're um, setting headless to false so that it will actually open up. We're setting dev tools to true, um, which is quite useful if, you, if there's any issues, you can debug it, but you can set it to false as well. But that could also be useful if you have, um, say, things you log to the console that you want about to check for, um, you could um, adapt that just there as well. Um, then what I'm doing, I'm just adding this instance to my browser um, array up here, uh, which I use in cleanup. Then I get the extension ID, so that's what we showed a minute ago. Um, and the reason I get that is because I want to test my, my pop-up HTML, so my pop-up script uh, page, um, so I can actually use this. So what we then do is we go to that page, so we use browser, get the, the default page, we go to our pop-up, we bring it to the front, we wait for um, elements that we expect to be there um, to be ready, so we just use here. So we make sure as well to await all of these. Um, so we're waiting for our button, then we grab the, the button element just here and set the, the text, so the inner text of our button to this uh, variable here. That's where we log it. You don't really need to do that, um, but it's useful when you're setting these up. And then all we're doing here is just a standard just um, uh, test to see if our text is equal to this string just here. So this is where we're saying button string. Does that, is that what that text is? If it is, we pass that test. Um, so next, this part here is exactly the same. We're loading up our pop-up and then all we're doing here, instead of checking the button, we're checking our H1. So like I say, very, very simple, but you can imagine how this could uh, be evolved into your extension. If you have some buttons you want to click, you can do that using standard puppeteer. So it's like testing a normal page, um, but you can perform all of those actions just there. Um, so we're just testing here to see uh, what our pop-up title is. So does that match? So this next one here is slightly different. We're trying to see, we're loading a, a page. So you can see here we're loading google.com and we're waiting for these elements again and we want to check this injected element. This is injected from our content script onto this page. And what we want to do here is check to see, uh, does this injected element contain this string? So very similar to before. If it does, it passed that test. So this is a really simple way of looking at it, hopefully, and hopefully it makes it easy to understand. Um, so if I just open up my terminal again. Um, so this means we can actually run these tests just by saying uh, yarn Jest, and that will then open up those Chromium browsers and start making these tests. Um, so yeah, this is hopefully easy to understand and something that you can use to uh, start testing your extension more thoroughly. So as you, you know, start to have your extension grow, um, this could be quite useful um, to use. Now it should be possible to do this within Firefox as well, but I haven't explored that just yet. Um, but as you can see, there's that issue again with this which wasn't happening before, so I don't know if I've changed something slightly. But you can see as soon as I click that, it's injecting, and that will then close. Um, but again, if you're on another site, for example, say I change this uh, to a different page. I'm going to try and think of one now. Uh, say quick info. We run it again. Let's see what we get this time. So hopefully that doesn't have a, a big element that appears over the top of the page. Once we go, it's going to run see here there's the first one appearing so the first two are pretty much instant because that's basically just loading a page and checking um, but because we have two it's just that slight delay um, and again if it was headless uh, this would be much quicker as well because it's not having to actually run this 
uh, onto our screen. So there is quick info, and is that going to be shouldn't re require any action from us? Oh, they do have another element. There is our element though, and it worked. Okay, so yeah, that's just a quick uh, introduction into end to end testing for a Chrome extension. If you've got any questions on this, please do drop a comment below and let me know. Um, but otherwise, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.